What's up, Rustations? Welcome back to Let's Get Rusty. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how your Python code can interface with your Rust code. But before we get to the video, if you haven't already, make sure to get your free Rust cheat sheet by heading over to letsgetrusty.com forward slash cheat sheet. With that said, let's get rusty. The first thing we need to do is make sure we have Python 3 installed. To do that, you can type in Python 3 dash dash version. Now that we've confirmed that Python 3 is installed, let's create our project directory. Our project directory is gonna be called word underscore counter. We'll CD into our word counter directory and create a new Python environment. Now that we have our Python environment set up, we're going to install a tool called Maturin, which will help us publish our Rust binaries as Python packages. Next, we're going to run Maturin init and select PyO3. PyO3 is a Rust library that provides Rust bindings for Python. After running Maturin init, we now have a Rust project with Python bindings. Let's go ahead and open up our project in VS Code. Inside VS Code, you'll see several things going on. We have an environment directory, a GitHub workflows directory for continuous integration, a source directory, target directory, and a few configuration files. We can ignore most of this for now, but let's go ahead and open up cargo.toml. A couple things you'll notice here. First, we have our library create configuration. The name of our library crate is going to be word counter and the crate type is going to be cdylib. This means our Rust code will be compiled into a shared library which our Python code can import. We also see a dependency on the pyo3 library which again gives us Rust bindings for Python. Let's go ahead and look in the source directory. We have one file called lib.rs. As you can see some code is already written for us. First everything in the pyo3 prelude is imported. Then we can see a function defined called sum as string annotated with pi function. The pi function annotation exposes this function to Python. You'll also notice that this function returns pi result, which represents the result of a Python call. Next, we see another function defined called word counter, this time annotated with pi module. This means that the word counter function will be used to create a Python module called word counter. This function takes two arguments. The first argument is of type Python, which represents holding Python's global interpreter lock. We can ignore this argument for now. The second argument is a borrow to Py module, which represents the Python module object. We can use the module object to add our sum as string function to the module by calling add function and then wrapping our function with wrap Py function. With this default code, we've defined one module called word counter that has one function called sum as string. Let's try to use this module in our Python code. First, we'll create a new folder in the root of our directory called examples. Inside the examples folder, we'll create a file called example.py. Inside this Python file, we'll import word counter and then call sum as string. Next, let's open up our terminal. We'll call Matern develop, which will build our Rust code into a Python library and install it into the virtual Python environment we have set up. Now let's try to run the example.py program. We got the result three as expected, meaning our Python code was able to call into our Rust library. Now that we know the infrastructure is working, let's update our Rust library. First, we'll change the name of the function sum as string to count words. Then instead of taking in two arguments, we'll take in one argument, which is gonna be of type string. To avoid errors, we'll also replace the function body with a to-do macro. 
Then instead of returning pi result, we'll return pi containing pi any. Pi represents a reference to an object allocated on Python's heap, and pi any represents any Python object. In this case, we want to return a Python dictionary containing the words in this string and their counts. To do that, we'll start off by creating a hash map. First, we'll need to import hash map from the standard library. Then we'll create a new hash map. Then we'll create a for loop which iterates through all the words in this string. Then we'll use HashMap's entry API to either get a mutable reference to the count of a word, or if the word does not exist in the hash map, create a new entry with the count set to 1. If an entry already exists, we'll increment the count by 1. We'll also need to make the hash map mutable. And lastly, we'll return the hash map as a Python object. In this case, calling the function with GIL acquires Python's global interpreter lock, which we need to convert the hash map into a Python object. Our function is now complete, so let's go ahead and use it inside our Python code. First, we'll open up our terminal and call matter and develop again. Next, we'll need to update example.py. And finally, we can rerun our program. This time we get a dictionary with words and their count. And we actually have a bug here. And that's because instead of inserting one as the default value, we should insert zero. And that's because we're always going to increment the count. Let's go ahead and build our Rust program again and then rerun example.py. And this time we get the correct word count. That's it for this video. If you want to see more videos about integrating Rust with other languages, leave a comment down below. Also, make sure to give this video a like. And last but not least, get your free Rust cheat sheet by heading over to letsgetrusty.com forward slash cheat sheet. With that said, I'll see you in the next one.